This is the pitfalls and positives of AT or autosomal DNA, or, hi dad, ancestor DNA says you are my father. Don't ever want to call like that. Uh, my name is Mike Weitzman. I uh, have been doing genealogy for 30 years. I've had my DNA tested by the Sorensen Molecular Genealogical Foundation, Family Tree DNA, Ancestry, 23andMe, Living DNA, and My Heritage DNA. So I made, I made sure that I could use them as a subject matter. And uh, I did that because I did not believe or trust my initial uh, DNA results. Those results said that my Y DNA, deep ancestry, came out of the Middle East. Look at the picture and tell me that that looks anything well, like that. So I now want to help others. DNA, your deep DNA could be from the Middle East. It, it is. I found that out. But <laughs> so I'm not a genetic science I, scientist. I don't have a BS, an MS, or a PhD. I am not a DNA expert, and there's some really good ones out there. I am, call myself an experienced DNA novice or newbie. A, uh, Oscar Wilde said that experience is the name everyone gives their mistakes. So I may have made a few. Uh, in this course, we're going to uh, talk about pitfalls of DNA testing, that there could be some uh, negative side effects. Autosomal DNA specifics, what kind of results you will get when you test, my testing advice, and then there's a listing of books to uh, read and blogs to visit, and all this is basically uh, on the handout. Uh, we do have uh, several people that signed up through the library and if all else, make sure that you send an email to uh, Shasta Dig, which you'll see later, our DNA interest group, to uh, if you'd like to keep up with this. So, genetic genealogy or DNA test uh, kits, now called direct to consumer or DC DTC kits. They were uh, first developed in 2000, sold in 2001 to help genealogists find lost ancestors. That at the time was Y-DNA. More recently, those kits have been marketed to the general public as a way to determine your ethnicity. Somebody's talking in the background there. Uh, so I'm gonna endeavor to answer questions based on all motivations for testing. Is that voice there, or is that the TV? Right, right. well, it's on here. Uh, autosomal DNA testing can be, for a lot of us, the good, yeah. some the bad, and for others, definitely the ugly. Yeah. You may remember the movie. Do we have any volume? That's what I was looking. Ele Eleanor, you need to mute, mute your speak your microphone. Okay, the pitfalls. Are you ready for potential unpleasant realities? Oh, what could go wrong? <laughs> if you do not want the answer, don't test. And uh, from experience, both DNA test results or traditional genealogical, genealogical records can reveal misattributed parentage, either illegitimate births, adultery, sperm donors, who knows, or previously unknown family members or an anticipated ethnicity, among other unexpected outcomes. Or you may not have any close matches. You may not have any relatives at all. It is your responsibility to be informed and understand the potential outcomes before you DNA test or you have other people test. They may not want to find unknown family members. My heritage specifically says by using their services, you may learn information you do not anticipate, which may evoke strong emotions and has the potential to alter your life and worldview. Uh. We have some examples. What could go wrong? There's a lot of different stories, but Bill Griffith, a uh, financial journalist with CNBC, <laughs> discovered the man who raised him was not his biological father. Through a DNA test, he found out that his mom had had an escapade 
uh, with someone else and he was the result. He wrote a book called A Stranger in My Genes. Interesting uh, turn of the terms. What else could go wrong? This is a letter that came to uh, ask Amy that my husband and I decided to do a DNA test for fun. It turns out my father and I don't share DNA. And uh, mother had an affair. She thought it was after she was born. It was a relationship with a neighbor who was a dysfunctional alcoholic. Turns out the man was my bi biological father. Needless to say, this rocked my world and broken my heart. There are too many stories of people who found something out similar to that. One of our Shasta Genealogical Society members discovered through DNA she was not related to a cousin. How do you tell your cousin that he's not part of the family? Well, it was on her dad's side of the family. It's his, her dad's mother's, I think, son, something like that. But imagine her surprise when she discovered she was donor conceived. And that was in the early 1950s. Extensive research and a cousin revealed the secrets. It will make a good book. And one of the things she did is she talked to some of her cousins to help use them as elimination. And one of them said, did anybody ever tell you the family secret that your father couldn't have children? So they went to a clinic. Uh, she wrote a fantastic article called My DNA Wild Ride. The link is on your uh, handout. But it lets you know that you'll see some of the things that can happen. And so are you prepared for those unexpected results? Another situation now is do you want the police to have your DNA? How many people, how many of you have heard of a story that somebody was identified through contributed DNA uh, and convicted of a crime? The uh, law enforcement uh, has found a lot of use for it. The DNA companies routinely resist requests by law enforcement and require a search warrant. But there are instances a search warrant was issued, a match found in the DNA tester and or his, her relative was found not to be involved. But how about your relatives? Are you sure of all of them? Uh, a lot of that was found out through GEDmatch. GEDmatch is an open personal, genomics database and genealogy website. Any of you can uh, upload yeah. your inf information to it. The website gained significant cover coverage in April 2018 after it was used by law enforcement to identify a suspect in the Golden State Killer case. That person has since pled guilty. Uh, on September 21 September 2018, the NorCal rapist was identified with the same process using matches from GEDmatch. And uh, Wikipedia says other law enforcement agencies started using GEDmatch, making it the de facto DNA and genealogical database for all of law enforcement. There are law enforcement databases, but that's only with the bad people in it. They need to match with the good people to find out who the bad person may be if that person hasn't had a DNA uh, test. And the Sacramento uh, County District Attorney, Mary Ann Schubert said, once you put it into GEDmatch, you start working on family trees. And the result was they were able to arrest someone and get a conviction. Uh, GEDmatch was acquired by a company called Verigen Incorporated in December, 2019. They've tightened the rules and they require anybody that's in there to opt in. That's the company that the DNA geneticist uses. Right, to, if, if you want law enforcement to have access to it. So, and they can use it for where violent crime is murder, non-negligent manslaughter, aggravated rape, robbery, or aggravated assault. So, uh, a lot of people are urging people Make sure it's available to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. If you don't want the answer, DNA, that is, do not ask. And when you ask the question, 
Are you prepared mentally and emotionally to accept? I suddenly lost hearing you. You're muted. We all got by accident, I think. We can't hear you, Mike. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Now we can. Uh, it's at least two people. Must have clicked on. Uh, somebody touched touched it. I'm not sure what it was, but okay. So, are you ready to unlock uncomfortable secret truths about your family? How many of those family lore could actually come true about Uncle Harry and all of his uh, concubines? So, it can be embarrassing. Are you ready for the phone call? I was adopted. Can you help me? Cousin, you have a half brother. Hi, <laughs> sis. My DNA tests, we are half siblings. Yep. Hi, dad. Ancestry DNA says you're my father. And I can tell you that every one of those has occurred at one time or another. So I'll give you a medical health warning. And that is you may have a heart attack when your results arrive and they're not what you expect. Hopefully not. Then who do you believe? <clears throat> Remember your family may sugarcoat, embellish, or flat out lie about the family history. And Dagwood finds out at the yard sale that this gentleman is saying this teacup once belonged to Martha Washington. <clears throat> Dagwood says, wait, wait a minute. It says made in China on the bottom and the guy says that makes sense. Truth be told, there are a lot of big fat liars in my family tree. So DNA does not lie. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Those matches you have, yep, they're related to you. Secrets will come out in the wash. So now you know that there are a lot of potential pitfalls, and I spend time on that because uh, people need to know that before they test, not after. But how many here viewing have had sex and experience? Probably not too many of you. And hopefully, if it was, it was something minor. So based on that, most people will have no revelations. So go forward. DNA testing is going to help you. Some of the specifics about autosomal DNA will include the definition of autosomal DNA. And that is the combined DNA found in the 22 match pairs of chromosomes or autosomes in your uh, nuclear uh, structure of every cell in your body. Autosomal DNA is inherited from both parents and includes random contributions from their parents and past generations. You know you're going to get 50% from mom and 50% from dad. From grandparents, it might be a little bit off 25% uh, each, but it's still gonna add up to 50, et cetera, and going on through. We have the 23 p uh, pairs of chromosomes. Again, we get uh, one of each pair from our mother, the other from our father. The 22 pairs are autosomes as depicted on the screen. The 23rd pair are the uh, sex chromosomes, X, XX or XY chromosomes. So we have to ask, why should you test? One good reason is you have a brick wall because autosomal DNA addresses all the ancestral lines as a, compared to Y DNA, which only goes along the father's 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 line or MT DNA, which only goes along the mother's 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 line. So you can fill in maybe some of those other places. Adoptees who are searching for biological parents have a better chance with ATDNA. And there's a lot of websites that you can use uh, to help with that. I've been helping a, a lady uh, try and make contact with her biological family. She had uh, had the opportunity to meet her, meet her biological mother years ago, but lost the information to contact that person. By the time she was able to get back into it, the, her bio mother had passed away, but there was a fantastic uh, niece match 
on ancestry and a first cousin once removed on ancestry and we have been able to make contact with her half brother and her aunt and uh, we've talked to both of them she's getting a new new family <laughs> You are trying to, to prove or disprove a relationship. DNA can help you do that. You're looking for UFOs. That's a unidentified familial offspring. Some of that family lore you heard about Uncle Harry, did he have any other children out there? It can help you find maiden names, or you want to become personally involved in your family history. Uh, you, that will make you part of it. When do you test? Okay. When you feel comfortable, basically you know the positives and negatives, et cetera, et cetera, and you understand the pros and cons that you feel comfortable. <clears throat> and I always say today, just after the class, because I've had good success in finding uh, family with uh, the DNA. Who should take the test? Now would be the earliest generation is the best because your autosomal DNA is diluted by 50% with each generation. Well, you have 50% uh, from mom and 50% from dad. If you, okay, and, you're, and a, one of your siblings Some don't change this isn't all about you okay somebody still got it's their uh about matt okay you happen to be okay okay uh so if you can have your mom or dad test it's going to give you more definition going back so children get 50 percent of their at dna from each parent Grandchildren, 25, about 25 from uh, each grandparent. Great grandchildren, about 12.5 from each grandparent. It, it's quite a difference. So the average amount inherited is shown on this chart. And uh, <clears throat> it's available through uh, ISOG of the, its autosomal DNA statistics. But you get 50% from parents, 25 from the grandparents, 12.5 and on but also you get share a certain amount with other uh, kin in your family. Uh, an even better uh, chart that shows that includes a percent and the centimorgans uh, involved. And this is called the how to calculate cousinhood chart. Uh, came through Family Tree Magazine as a PDF download that I've used routinely, but it, <clears throat> it'll tell you your parent has uh, about 3,400 centimorgans. With a, uh, a sibling, you'll have about 2,500. You get down to, let's see, a niece or a nephew, 1,700. So uh, when you see your matches, you may have a calculation by the company, but that'll help uh, you understand it also. DNA Painter has a uh, ha has the shared CM uh, Cinemorgan project uh, on their website. This was developed by Blaine Bettinger and some others. Uh, Johnny Pearl, who has a DNA Painter, is excellent that he has been able to put the stuff in there. You put the total number of CN Cinemorgans you share with a match here. I'll use 1832, and then that will tell you what the chances are of how you're related. In this case, it's either a grandparent, an aunt and uncle, a half sibling, a niece, nephew, or a grandchild. Now, if you're a 65-year-old uh, <clears throat> person, it, unless you have a grandparent that lived for a long time, might not be it. Could be an aunt and uncle, could be a half sibling, could be a niece or nephew. You'd know if if it was your grandchild. Uh, as you have 
fewer cinema organs, it'll end up giving you more possibilities just because that's the way the system works. But it explains that to you that way. It also gives it on a, a chart that shows <coughs> that the average number of cinema organs and then the spread of cinema organs, which can be useful also. In this case, the 1832 fits very nicely into the niece nephew and that's the example I explained earlier that uh, the, uh, the person I was helping now knows that this is a full niece nephew and so that niece nephew's mother was a full sister which was not known before. So this is originally created by Blaine Bettinger, who's one of the DNA experts, improved with the help of Johnny Pearl from DA, uh, DNA Painter, uh, thanks to both of them. It's a great tool, it's available online. Por the porcupine family tree shows where your DNA comes from. You have to realize that DNA from some of your ancestors is lost through generations, through re recombination, you know that you get 50% from mom, 50% from dad. And they get, uh, you get about 25% from your grandparents, 12.5. But somewhere back here, all this DNA can't make it through. So from this great, great, great grandparent, you didn't get anything. Where maybe this one, it's a significant amount. You have to realize also siblings may inherit segments that you do not. So if you have the impression that you have one of those uh, Native American princesses in the family, have other people test because that may show where it didn't get to you. The way this happens, I call helter skelter because you never know exactly which combination you got. Where do you get a kit? Almost all of us know that the four primary labs are ancestry, my heritage, family tree DNA, 23andMe. The costs are there. Family tree DNA is good because it has a chromosome browser tool that you can, can, can compare with other people. Uh, these prices all cost less when they're on sale. I haven't looked today, but they could be on sale at any time. Uh, my Heritage has had kits as low as $39 in the last year. Family Tree DNA routinely has it down to 49. Uh, Ancestry DNA 59, maybe 49. 23 and Me usually about 59 when they're on sale. But you can save money that way. Okay, we'll go into what you get when you do the test, when it's done. <clears throat> the labs will advise you the, that the results are available and they'll provide you a listing of your matches and a calculation of your ethnicity. And that ethnicity, remember, is based on ancestors location about 400 years ago. It isn't where your great grandparents came from although it might be if they haven't moved in 400 years. So you'll get your matches. From Ancestry, I have uh, matches anywhere from a first to second cousin to another first or second cousin on down through. Uh, some of them have trees, some of them don't. One of the features of uh, Ancestry is you can identify people to groups. So this one, because it has the surname, means it's on my dad's side of the family. Uh, the uh, chartreuse color because it has my mom's mother's maiden name. I know it's on my mom's side of the family and you're able to go in there and do that yourself. Uh, family tree DNA will uh, give you a similar type of a, a readout. <clears throat> You'll notice the numbers come up. You'll see these numbers on other ones. Most of these folks that are close I've had test more than one place. So uh, Family Tree DNA gives you a relationship range. They will show you how much DNA you share, share the biggest block. It'll show you if you're an X match, which means something's probably coming down on mom's side of the family. 
23andMe. <clears throat> There's is similar. One of the things you have to realize that you will be getting new matches periodically. So in this case, in 2018, I had a second cousin match at 2.66%. Uh, uh, by 2018, that 2.66 was number two. And by this year, the person was number three. So you're, you will be getting new matches all the time. You always hope that they're the ones that are 8, 10, 20 percent, not the ones that are 1.24 percent. That's probably the second to sixth cousin. Okay. My heritage, similar type of thing. They will give you uh, the relationship. In this case, it is my brother. Uh, uh, first cousin wants to remove for me, another first cousin wants to remove. Uh, they will show you how the percentage and centum organs that you share, et cetera. So the companies are you know, fairly close on that. <clears throat> the other thing that you get is an ethnicity estimate. The DNA companies utilize a number of factors to determine your ethnicity, including a reference population or a uh, reference panel or database. Uh, they, they base it on certain markers or places on your uh, DNA. They have comparative population size that they will go to areas that have been stable, find people with uh, have been there for 400 years, 500 years, and test them to say that may be representative. Each company uses different criteria, so that could explain the fickleness of the results. They don't come up looking the same. So, and in fact, Ancestry reevaluates it regularly. In July of 2012, I was 97% Scandinavian. If you're into ethnicities, that's not bad. By October of 2012, they said, oh, wait a second, we're gonna call you 51% Scandinavian, 43% Great Britain. That's getting a little bit closer to uh, what it should be. In 2017-2018, uh, they <coughs> had me at 51% Scandinavian, 43% Great Britain. No big change there. But they did add in their map some communities that I might be related to, eh, which is getting into the neighborhood there for my mom's side of the family. They did an update in September of 2018 and they changed it to 50%, down 1%, <clears throat> but they also added Sweden. Now, if you have any uh, ancestors from Norway, you may not want to say that you have Swedish ancestors too, because there's always been a competition between the countries. In January of this year, they changed it again. My Swedish went down from 17 to 12. My English went up a little bit. I'm still 50% uh, from Norway. That would be my, grand my maternal grandparents. It also changed the map a little bit, focused on the area of South Norway where the ancestors came from. In October of this year, they did it again. They came up with only 6% Swedish, now 60% Norway. And again, they identified this. They also said I have 20% from England and Northwestern Europe. It should be higher than that. But you may or may not know that there's an area in England called Dane Law. Dane Law is where the Vikings settled after one of the uh, treaties that they had promising not to raid the castles anymore. And so from the year about 1000 on, there were a lot of Scandinavians that moved to uh, England. And if your ancestors can't come from Central Eastern England, that may be where that uh, ethnicity comes from. Even, even though it says Sweden, that's where it's common now, but the people moved around. P 
people moved around constantly through time for any number of reasons. So my changing stuff at uh, Ancestry is depicted here. Uh, my uh, Norwegian has gone from 50 up, or from 51 originally, uh, 50 to 60. Sweden has gone down. England has gone down generally. Uh, other things like Ireland, Scotland came up, as did Germanic Europe. Uh, it's their perception of it. You take these results with a grain of salt. You accept the info, but you maintain a degree of skepticism about its accuracy and be pre prepared uh, for the percentages to change. It's just, that's the way life is and you have to accept it. Family Tree DNA started out with the uh, population finder. Uh, they said I was 94% uh, uh, European, 5.1% Middle Eastern. Uh, that Middle Eastern is probably on my dad's father's 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 side of the Y DNA. Uh, in the 7,500 years ago, they came out of the Middle East. Uh, it's <clears throat> in 2015 they changed a little bit. They actually got down into saying, "I'm 96% European, 41%." Uh, British Isles, Scandinavia, 40%. The example is, it changes. So, and their maps change as to where they say this population would be. Uh, in this case, Family Tree DNA says Ireland and England are the same uh, genetics. I don't know if anybody would really agree with that, but uh, they give the new values as to where your uh, ancestors may have come from. <clears throat> Again, they changed a little bit more. They changed the map more uh, in the last month or so. So uh, it, it bounces around. So the comparisons are in uh, March, I had uh, four, 43% uh, Scandinavian, it dropped to 32. British Isles went from 32 to 40. Yeah, I don't know if it makes any sense, plus the maps changed. Uh, it could be confusing to folks. Again, you take the results with the grain of salt. 23 and Me changed from 2014. Uh, although they did have 63% non-specific, which uh, has gone down over time, but they again, it's similar to uh, the other companies. Is they keep adding more to their gene pool of who they compare to, and so your percentages are going to change. So if you thought you were a ethnicity, uh, you may not want to bank on it because it could change very easily. The one thing that they generally get pretty close is the continent. They can tell you if you come from uh, Asia, Africa, uh, Native Americans, or Europeans, they're getting that fairly close. They now have it down to only 21.6 or broadly Northwestern European. So, the percentages are uh, getting a little bit better. It still needs a lot of salt. 23andMe also gives you your Neanderthal variants. Uh, a couple years ago, I was had more than 78% of the customers. There must have been more to test it. Now it's at 76% that I have uh, more Neanderthal than uh, they do. And, that may have something to do with that European uh, inheritance. Okay. My heritage is going to give the same thing. Doesn't uh, hasn't changed as much, but they they will depict it based on their databases. Uh, they haven't really changed it, although it's supposed to be coming here shortly to uh, reevaluate. 
Another one I haven't mentioned before is Living DNA. It's one of the newer companies. It only recently started to give matches. And so it was gonna be of some value. But again, it's gonna tell me that uh, I'm mostly European, North and West, but I have Great Britain and Ireland, and they'll get down into some of the actual uh, counties in, uh, in Great Britain. <clears throat> One of the interesting things is, is a lot, along with a, a lot of uh, Scandinavian and uh, Western Europe and England, they give me 1.6% Basque. And I haven't been able to figure out if anybody ever went there even. So, but it could be because of the Y DNA could be similar enough. So <clears throat> I know specifically my maternal grand grandparents came from Norway. My paternal grandmother, I call uh, colonial English. My paternal grandfather, I know his father was German. His mother will uh, probably uh, would be English with the last name of Tuttle. So I should have about 50% Scandinavian, 37.5% English, 12.5% German. Although those percentages will be changed just because I may not have got a lot of the, uh, the DNA from England. Who knows? I also have the Y-DNA haplogroup coming out of the Fertile Crescent. So that was several thousand years ago. Why you take this with a grain of salt? So all the companies say I'm pretty close to 100%. I, uh, this is a sample I sent in, which was the data from, uh, I believe, 23andMe. This is an actual test, so the percentages are off a little bit. So if you send another company's uh, sample in, it's going to come out different. But those are the variations that you'll find on mine just from Scandinavia. <clears throat> a low of 32%, a high of 66%, mm, twice as much. Great Britain, uh, the high of 57.9, uh, the low of 16.8. All the way through the process, the numbers are different. Their populations are different, etc. This is maybe skewed a little bit because I had to do some combination because they use different geographics for where the DNA comes from. Uh, this this is how they look on a bar graph. So you, this is just about the opposite. My heritage too is. The opposite of ancestry. Uh, I know I have ancestors from those uh, uh, areas, but it's just you you wonder how crazy can it get? Judy Russell is the legal genealogist. Her perspective is I will take ethnicity estimates not merely with a grain of salt, but with the whole darn salt lick. She knows that they are not accurate. They're great conversation pieces for the cocktail party, but they're really not going to give you uh, anything other than a, maybe a, an enhanced ego if you thought that you really should be all Irish. Uh, in 2017, just before the Heritage Fair, I was able to find a comment that somebody said that Ancestry sent out a survey asking if there's any inheritance in the DNA testing of pets. I guess it's true because my German Shepherd is not German at all. 60% of his DNA is Scottish Terrier. Now he's taking bagpipe lessons. And everyone's a critic. critic. If you remember, their ad at the time had someone who was German who found out that he was more Scottish. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. Why do you want a DNA test? Is it just for fun? Do you need to find uh, a specific line? Are you adopted? Uh, what are you hoping to learn? 
and it's going to be worth your cost. Any more, the cost is really reasonable. What used to be three to four hundred dollars or more is down under a hundred, sometimes closer to fifty. Uh, so it's cost isn't as much, but you still want to be cautious that you don't buy into any of the testing until you feel comfortable. Not only you, but uh, for the people you're buying the kits for, that they understand that they might find out something that they didn't want to find out. Uh, what do you want to, what are your expectations? Are you just seeking your ethnicity? Not very reliable. You need to break brick walls. People have had great success with that. <clears throat> are you seeking a biological parent? And in that case, uh, you have to remember, you have to respect others' privacy. They may not be looking for you. Uh, there have been some of the instances on the uh, TV shows that they actually had people, they found the people, they go, that's fine, I don't want to know anything about it. So, But there are many helpful uh, websites or Facebook pages. DNA Detectives is one. Uh, Search Angels, DNA Adoptions. Uh, those are listed on the fourth page of your handout. Uh, anybody that uh, is an adoptee, very valuable. You have to uh, look to others. If they've tested, can it help? Yes, it can. And uh, urge you to communicate with those who've tested. Uh, our Shasta DNA Interest Group uh, is one option. We uh, normally would meet on the second Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the Reading uh, Family History Center, but with COVID, uh, next month we may actually manage to do a Zoom at meeting. Uh, you can get information at shastadig at gmail.com. I will respond to your emails. You can learn from others' experiences through uh, ISOG, the International Society of Genetic Genealogy. It was formed in uh, the early uh, 2000s to educate people about the use of genetics and genealogy. They have lots of good support information and there's no dues or fees. I look to their website periodically to get answers. If you're really serious, you want to uh, fish in more than one pond and that you have your DNA tested by more than one lab or you upload your raw DNA from either Ancestry or 23andMe to uh, MyHeritageDNA, FamilyTreeDNA, and or GEDmatch. You could do that for free. You may end up paying a little fee to get all the services, but it is uh, useful. And the more people you compare against, the greater the chance you'll get a, a, a close match. There's a lot of tools that are available. Uh, GEDmatch is one. Genome Mate Pro is another. I have not used that, but it's a tool for uh, managing your DNA comparisons. You can look to Kitty Munson Cooper's chromosome browser as she'll help you uh, compare to others. I have, as a side note, I have to say that Kitty Munson Cooper is related to me. This is one of the uh, DNA gurus uh, had posted uh, a family tree for, or DNA for one of my cousins in Norway. Kitty sent an email, said, you know, you're related to my father. We went back and forth. We know it may be through a, like a ninth great grandmother, which shouldn't be that much DNA, but we keep looking. And I've had a chance to talk to her and uh, she gave me uh, some insight on her family in that area of Norway. So. My recommendations are test with Ancestry because they have 18 million plus people. Uh, then when the results are available, download the raw data, upload for free to MyHeritageDNA, and then you can, uh, for a small fee, you can uh, have more comparisons. And there's 2.5 million there. If you upload for free to uh, Family Tree DNA, pay a $19, fee one time, you get all their features. And that's another 1.5 million people to compare against. You can upload for free for GEDmatch, 
no cost, no nothing else, uh, 1.5 million. And, or you can pay to be tested with 23andMe. That would be another 9 million people to compare against. So if you do that, you're in all the major ponds. You've all the major companies and your, uh, your chance of finding a, finding a uh, good, real close match or better. There's also Living DNA, which now does allow matches, and I'm going to have to add them in. Uh, they are testing. You have to pay for a full test only. I believe it's somewhere around $99. There are genetic genealogy standards, and that is ISOG and others have recently developed the standards to provide ethical and usage statistics for all to follow. You can go to their website for the specifics. One of the primary things is the DNA that is collected uh, and all the data related to it belongs to the individual who donated the DNA. Even though you may have bought a kit for a cousin and you may administer their kit, it's still there. So if there's any decision to be made about testing other places, et cetera, they need to approve it. Uh, I've had good cooperation with uh, family members who've done that and it works well. So what is the worst that could happen? We have Sergeant Snorkel who got his DNA test back and found out that he is related to Beetle Bailey. How could that happen? Okay, so Shasta Dig does generally meet, meet uh, most months of the year. ShastaDig at gmail.com. Especially if you're not already getting emails from me, please uh, send in. We'll keep you up to date. And urge you to join and support the Shasta, <coughs> Shasta Genealogical Society. Got a lot of folks with a lot of experience. Not only can we help you with DNA, but we can also help you just with general uh, genealogical research. Uh, you can go to the website, shastagen.org. The mem membership applications are there. Thank you very much for your interest. We'll call this the end of the show. And we'll ask if there are any questions. And if you give me just a minute to get this down and this down, I should be able to see folks. Can you hear me now? We can, can I hear, can somebody say hello? Hi, Roger. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hey, we have six, oh, okay. Well, well, we we'll can't see, see anybody, oh. just, but we still see your screen. Yeah. Roger, you, your mic's muted. Unmute your mic. Unmute. Let's see, oh, let's see, let me get, Okay, let's see. Where is my mute? My mic is mute. No, it's no, no. no, we can hear you, Mike. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, that's uh, you were shaking your heads. You had to be able to hear me. Okay, well, I can see a whole bunch of folks here at least. Uh, let's see, they're on shared screen, is why you can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, uh, so the question. Does anybody have questions? Yes. Who's that? Who's, raise your hand. Wait. Peggy. Oh, okay, Peggy. Yes. So when you showed the porcupine slide, yes, uh, it looked like on the slide, like the um, empty holes didn't start occurring till like your great 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 grandparents. Is that about the level that you start getting? <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's dropping? somewhere. Again, you're. You're probably getting a little bit from uh, each of your great great grandparents, but then beyond that, it starts to narrow down. And uh, even where it shows a full amount from a uh, great great grandparent, it may not be that much. It may be a, a smaller amount. So it's just one of the challenges that you uh, you have of uh, trying to determine uh, which line somebody's matching on. But it, the uh, the porcupine, porcupine chart is a pretty good depiction that says 
you can't get all the DNA that great, 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 great grandmother Gladys sent down. It just, it can't all fit in the pattern. So, uh, pick, who else had a question? My screen just switched around. I got all kinds of different faces, different places. Another question. Oh, Sally Ann had a question. No, I just wanted to know if you can hear me. I can hear you very well, yes. So, oh, good. Uh, I came in late, so I appreciate it. Oh, okay. No, no, it's, it's good to have you there. I see some people have got themselves uh, muted like Wayne. I thought he would have questions at least. And Chris is there. Uh, I, I have a kind of a comment because I had called Ancestry. You remember when you had us do the um, upgrade where we made marks on everybody who was above, you know, six centimorgans? Yeah. And I did that. I just worked like crazy. Well, still now on Ancestry, when you press shared matches, they're only showing 20 centimorgans and above. They're not showing us those right. great lower matches. Oh, that's enough to make you mad for the effort that you put in? Yeah, and I asked, are you going to change it? And they had told me yes, but I don't know. I, I didn't see it. And I, you know, I, I, I did learn a lot of good things doing what you said, and I'm going to keep it, but it would be nice if they'd show up on that list. Right. Uh, for everybody's information, uh, a couple months ago, Ancestry decided they were going to uh, only show your matches down to uh, eight centimorgans, which is a fifth or sixth cousin, something like that. So anything beyond that would be uh, very distant. But as I went through and did some of mine, there I started to see patterns of cousins who fit into one great great grandparents uh, lineage. I'm going, oh, this is neat, I can use that. And so I was able to save well over a thousand of those. But on the other hand, you're going, oh good, now if they eliminated that, that's frustrating. So uh, are all of you able to see the different participants here or you just see me? We still you see your background. Okay. You still I, see the, the screen. I, I would like to introduce Chris uh, Cluckert, who was the uh, the person who wrote the uh, my wild or my wild DNA ride mm -hmm. uh, article for uh, the Santa Barbara County Genealogical Society. But uh, I mean the story that she was related to our uh, DNA uh, interest group meeting and uh, some of the stuff that we've gone back and forth on is just phenomenal. That all of a sudden you find out that everything that you had preconceived because you grew up with a family might change. And that's the frustration that uh, some folks run into that all of a sudden they're going, wait a second, my DNA is showing something else. And it can be pretty hard to explain to your relative that they're not part of the family. <laughs> Cause that would be the expectation. How could that person not be part of the family? Yeah. I'm, and you just, People have to be prepared for it. And I, uh, some folks will go, boy, I, you know, you just overemphasize that. Well, uh, for the person who didn't understand that could happen, uh, maybe that it would re reduce the, uh, the possibility of being uh, very frustrated. So other questions? I Thank have you. another question. Um, when you say about taking the ethnicity estimates with a grain of salt and you know we can see the differences that you had but but they weren't wildly different it's not like one company had you being greek and italian and another that kind of thing and and so it seems like okay the percentages might be different and maybe something close like Norwegian and Swedish, but they're not wildly crazy. They're, they're not totally crazy, uh, depending on the company, but still some people have put a lot of, uh, given those a lot of credit, 
and then been frustrated in the process that well maybe it's it's not true and it's it's just realize that it may be more like a political promise than a fact you know it may I also on uh, 23 and me they will also give you the county or the state or whatever the smaller um, unit of government is yes in in some places and I have found that that uh, has often turned out to be pretty accurate, either with what I already know, or then I trace back and find somebody and they are in one of those places. You know, I had no idea where in Germany they were from. And then I find a record and lo and behold, it's in there. So, oh, excellent. Yeah, so I, I mean, I feel like uh, there is some accuracy there, and as their database gets bigger, uh, they are able to pinpoint things more. Yes, that, 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 the better they're able to define things, the more accurate that will get. But again, you have to realize that that's uh, four or 500 years ago is, is the uh, parameters they have. And how many times did armies march across Europe from one direction or the other that changed the demographics, that changed where people lived? Or how many times in history was there a economic depression in one area where people went to where the work was somewhere else? And that's, you know, it just changes back and forth that way. So it can be a, a challenge trying to keep up with some of it. Mm -hmm. well, questions. questions. I see Linda waving her hand. Yes. Except Linda's is muted. Linda has your has her mic muted. It's still muted. It looks like. Yeah. Oh, now we can't see Linda, but it's still muted. Never did see Linda. No. Nope, Tell Eleanor working. that we can hear her, Mike. Oh, we can hear Eleanor though. She's not. Can? Yes. You okay, need can to you hear me now. Now you can. I can hear you now, Linda. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention. I didn't hear mentioned that it's illegal to DNA test in France unless you have a medical reason. And it's, so if you think you're a lot French or, or you, you know, it's not going to show up. And there are other countries that aren't um, testing as much either, like Poland, which I'm a lot Polish. And okay. also, uh, my heritage is based in England. So a lot of the, my that. heritage is going to show up with English. Yes. Yeah. The, my heritage is, uh, is from, uh, from England. They, uh, <laughs> You get those too. dispersed a lot of free yeah, kits to places yeah. in in Europe you know uh, all of Europe uh, France has a law that says you're not supposed to do that more and more people are testing and because they got a PO box in Germany or something but they uh, there is still a, a uh, not that many people to compare within uh, in and I know I have French and it's not showing up. It's frustrating, you know? Okay. Yeah, well, it would be. Yeah. I mean, I've got, I know there's some French, you know, so. It's like, and they, eh. they, attempt, they attempted to change that law recently and I think it ended up being vetoed. Uh, Scarlett. Scarlett I Nano. just wanted to mention that. Yeah. Um, the DNA testing of my heritage. Can you hear me? Yeah. I, you're breaking up at times, but go ahead. Okay, I'm probably gonna turn my video off. My connection is kind of poor. Okay. Um, my heritage was good about doing the testing for Madeira Island off of Portugal, because that's my husband's father's okay. family. The wow. First time he ever DNA tested, uh, he was a Martian. He didn't match anybody. But now all of a sudden he has second and third cousins still living there that all popped up because of the testing. So it is wow. getting around. Well, that, that's really neat because uh, the Azores, uh, Madeira, uh, the Canary Islands, very small populations, uh, not a lot of genetic diversity. So there's uh, a chance for a lot of endogamy where 
your cousins are uh, marrying cousins, which was not common in, or not uncommon in much of Europe, including the example I gave with uh, Kitty Munson Cooper that she, her DNA dad, her dad's DNA matches one of my cousin's DNA to a certain extent, but more than what would a ninth great grandmother would be. But I know just in my uh, Norwegian uh, ancestors, cousins were marrying cousins close enough that on my, I have lines on my uh, grandfather's side of the family. I have some matches on my grandmother's side of the family. My grandparents were cousins, first cousins. Okay. And one was, they're Norwegian as well. Uh, oh, from Kvitsoy? Kvitsoy. Kvitsoy and Skudnesavn. What's that? Kvitsoy and Skudnesavn. Skudnesavn, yeah. Which is right in the neighborhood because my grandparents were from the north end of Karma instead of the south end uh, <coughs> near to uh, Kvitsoy. So, the. And Roger, Roger gave me a, a full description of that. I'm waiting till he goes back to visit the island again after they put the uh, the undersea tubes in to get there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, so, I would you know go. how to take your share screen off. I think at the bottom there's a little click thing, and that way we can see everybody's faces bigger. Yeah. Oh. Go to the bottom of your screen where it says, and it'll it's lit up green. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Yeah, it might be at the top yeah, line. It says stop it share. Can comment. Yeah. Okay. Wait a second. Oh. Right oh, stop share. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. There we are. There <laughs> you go. Oh, look at I have 16 participants and I didn't know that. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, okay. Find, finding out new things all the time. And hopefully I'll have some uh, emails from folks uh, that signed up through the library that uh, they can participate participate in Shasta Dig uh, also. And if we ever get rid of all this uh, COVID stuff, it'll get even better. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm ready for it. This is my uh, COVID rebellion beard. My wife. Smile smirks a little bit there. Uh, That's not fair. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> you got it easy. So, okay, uh, we've we've gone our full hour. Uh, thank you very much for attending. I hope we uh, enlighten you folks and that you have good information. Uh, if you have additional questions. Don't hesitate to send to an email to Shasta Dig. That uh, it may take me a day or two to answer them, but uh, we'll do our best to uh, keep up with those and enlighten you more, perhaps. So uh, I did not learn. Well, I hope to learn, and that's how to find a person with an individual with. Uh, uh, DNA, I mean, you know, you have a list of matches. Right. To tell you. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I hope he's not listening to me. <laughs> well, one of the, one of the tools we have to try and, uh, isolate your, uh, matches into groups is called the leads method. And basically you uh, look at your matches, uh, one of your highest score matches, and then see who matches underneath that. And uh, you use something like an Excel database to do it. And then you go on to the next uh, highest one and you, in a separate column, you go down through and you start to see which family line it's on, starting basically with mom and dad, but then you can start isolating down to grandparents, I don't possibly, and very often great grandparents, and on down the uh, scale that I've been able to get some of them down. I'm going, well, that should be on my great grandfather's line because 
I know the one at the top is related that way. And this one down here at a low centimorgan is also related uh, on that. And so it, it would basically isolate it down to a great grandparent. I have not spent enough time with it personally to be able to, uh, to prove it really works, but I'm hoping it, that's one of the tools I'm gonna to use to identify my uh, brick wall at a, my father's father's mother, Mary Alice Tuttle, a great grandmother that all I know is she was born about uh, 1849. Beyond she came that, came out of the air. <laughs> came out of the air. Yes. That's Jane. So, does that help you, Eleanor? I didn't know you heard me. <laughs> yeah. We've yes, heard a lot from you, Eleanor. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> We'll, uh, I'll have to come over and uh, I'll show you what how that works and maybe that'll help uh, answer your questions. Okay, so. thank you, thank you. Okay, well. Thank you, thank you very much, Mike. I hope to uh, have your other classes on Zoom now that you know how. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. no. We're all learning. Yeah, yeah we're, we're all learning. This is uh, gonna be a, you a can phenomenal, do it. Uh, you know, in a few years, you won't even have to leave your house. If you want to do something, you can just sit and, and do a Zoom meeting with your... Uh